Negative keywords are a fundamental part of running a successful Google Ads account. Get them right and you maximize your traffic quality, making sure your ads are only showing for the right types of term for your business. But if you get them wrong, you can massively strangle your campaign and limit any potential of growth in your account for the long term and in the short term as well. So it's a really crucial part of account development. So today, I'm gonna to give you guys a negative keyword masterclass. We're gonna look in depth at all areas of negative keywords, how they work, what strategies to use when using negative keywords, and also the pitfalls to avoid when using negative keywords so you're not limiting your campaign and account growth. So first of all, what are negative keywords? Well, simply put, a negative keyword is gonna stop your ads from showing whenever they are triggered. So the way that positive keywords work are when positive keywords are triggered, your ads show on Google. With negative keywords, it works in reverse. And if you use negative keywords, they block your ads from showing on Google. For example, if you're a plumber and you're installing boilers for a living, then you may have a negative keyword in your campaign for video guide or tutorial to make sure people looking to do the job themselves aren't triggering your ads because obviously you want the work and you don't want people to look for tutorials to do the work themselves. So that's an example of a negative keyword where tutorial or guide or video could be negatives in this scenario to stop your ads from triggering for those types of searches. Like normal keywords in your account, negative keywords also use match types. You can have exact match negatives, phrase match negatives, and broad match negatives as well. And they kind of work in the same way as well. An exact match negative keyword will stop your ads from showing when somebody types in a search term exactly as shown in the the negative and a broad match negative will block a search term if all of the words in any order are contained in a user's search term it blocks them if all of those words in any order are shown in the user's search term query so it kind of works the same as a positive keyword but a little bit different so now you know how they work let's look at implementing negatives in your account in the right way first of all there are two use cases for adding negatives to an account either before a campaign goes live during the keyword research phase or after a campaign goes live and you're getting active search term data in your account. Both of these are equally as important because both can save you a lot of budget, but let's start off with the former. Before your campaign goes live and you're doing keyword research, it's the perfect opportunity to also do negative keyword research as well. Look at the data in the keyword planner. When you give the keyword planner a sample number of terms, it's gonna churn out every single term related to what you're focusing on. Now, when you do keyword research, all of these terms are not going to be relevant. There's gonna be a handful of terms you want to bid on that are actively gonna be used in your campaign that are relevant to the offering you have. All of the terms in that keyword research process that are deemed irrelevant, you can basically add them as exact match negatives because Google has data showing people are searching that way. But second to that, Google sees that people searching that way are related close enough to match towards your products and services. Google is telling you this in your keyword research. So it makes sense to use a lot of these terms in the keyword research phase as preemptive negatives going into your account before your campaign goes live. So during that keyword research phase is the perfect opportunity to add negatives at that time. But what about if your campaign is already running? How can you build a coherent negative keyword list to save and protect your budget? Well, that is where the search terms report comes in, which is a report that shows you what people actually typed into Google to find your ads as opposed to the keywords that were triggered by that search term. Getting the raw search data from a user's query is important because it shows you how successfully or otherwise Google is matching your user search terms to the keywords in your campaign. Now there's a bit of controversy with this report because as the years have gone on, Google has started redacting this report quite significantly. I have clients right now who are missing out on 80% of their search terms data. Yes, it's a bit of a rant here, it's frustrating, but you have to use the data you're shown and given. Google cites privacy as the reason for redacting so many search terms. I don't buy it, it's BS, but we've got to do what we've got to do. We have to look at the data we have and use what we can use. So as you go through the search terms report, you're gonna find very obvious negative keyword opportunities, stuff that literally is not related to your business in any way, shape, or form. It's a very easy way to eliminate those types of search. However, you wanna be careful which type of match type you use for your negative keywords here, because if you choose the wrong one, you're going to potentially block a lot of potential good traffic from coming through. For example, staying on the subject of a boiler repair business, if somebody typed in the word boilers, and then the ads were triggered, 
that's way too generic potentially for the campaign. So you want to make sure you add that as an exact match negative as opposed to a phrase or a broad because you still want traffic from people typing in the word boilers. You don't want to eliminate that term from all of the search terms coming through. So you have to choose the right match type in order to make sure you're preserving your budget but also leaving yourself open to get clicks that you want. What I want to talk about next is when you find patterns in your search terms report data because this is a very crucial part of optimizing campaigns more quickly. As you go through that search terms data, what you're going to start seeing is patterns in how people are searching that are negatively impactful for your business. What I mean by that is, say for example, you're advertising boiler repair in London and you start seeing search terms from boiler repair in Edinburgh or in Wales or in areas outside of your serviceable location. In that scenario, you can clearly see that Google is trying to match your search terms towards things that are outside of your serviceable region. So you go in and you add Edinburgh as a negative, you add Reading as a negative, you add all the locations, wherever it is, that are going to be in the search terms data as negative keywords. But why stop there? In this scenario, look up a list of all towns and cities outside of your serviceable location and add them as negative keywords to your campaign because then you're future-proofing any future potential searches for locations outside of your serviceable area. Don't wait because Edinburgh showed up one week for another area like um, Wales or somewhere like that to show up the next week. Just take action now. You can see the pattern in the data reacts to those patterns in search terms and you can protect your budget in the longer term instead of waiting to waste clicks on areas you can't service. One other big thing to be aware of when you're going through that search terms data is trying not to be too aggressive with adding negative keywords that in the long term could turn into a conversion. And this is incredibly important if you are on broad match or long term in your campaign roadmap to growth, you're considering using broad match in the future. And this is why. Okay, so let me illustrate to you what I mean about being careful with negative keywords depending on how you're running your campaigns. So this pie chart represents users searching for these two types of term. Extremely generic, but I've chosen them because they are real examples from real campaigns I manage where I had to be very careful with negative keywords for this reason. So when you think about a broadband or internet comparison website and the term Wi-Fi, just on its own, Wi-Fi, turns up in the search terms report, you probably think that's way too generic, we need to make that an exact match negative. Another one, another e-commerce client running search campaigns, they have the term dress turn up in their search terms report. Again, way too generic. What type of dress? What color is it? What style is it? This brand that sells a very specific type of style. So you might think to yourself, hold on, this is also way too generic. I wanna make these exact match negatives. So you'd add this to your campaign is typically what you would do. Kind of makes sense. You think, oh, I'm getting loads of clicks for these. That makes sense. Here's why this could be a mistake. Say for argument's sake, you're running a campaign on exact match or phrase match, then potentially that's fine. That's okay. And it's okay for this reason. When Google is using broad match, it has enhanced bidding signals, meaning it can see the intent behind the keyword much more than the other match types. So on a broad match setup, doing this would be a big mistake. So you wouldn't want to do this on a broad match setup. Because I tell you right now firsthand as I look through this and I remember these two campaigns, these two search terms turned out to be the highest converting search terms in the entire account. Now that sounds crazy but it makes sense if you look at the pie chart up here. This pie chart represents people typing in generic search terms. The vast majority of that red section is going to be not relevant. That's the majority of people looking for this type of thing. A very small sliver, that green section is gonna be relevant people. Now, in a normal setup with exact match or phrase match, you can say, yeah, I wanna eliminate these terms because 99% of them are going to be irrelevant searches and Google, Google doesn't know the difference. That makes perfect sense. In, an, in a broad match scenario, Google knows when to pull back and then when to go in order to make sure they're using your budget to get the conversions from the broad traffic. So in that scenario, Google knows, I think this person isn't relevant, so I'm gonna pull back and not show the ads. And I think, oh, this person is relevant. They're typing in Wi-Fi, but they must mean this based on their historic behaviors and based on their historic search history. They must mean they're looking for a deal on their internet. Oh, this person typed in dress. Oh, they have this kind of styling. This is the kind of thing they've looked at before. I think this business will do well to show to this person for this generic search term at this time because they meet the criteria. So that to me is the biggest difference between how to approach negatives because Google knows when to dip in and dip out of auctions. And here's how I know it's doing a good job of it. First of all, I said these two terms ended up being the highest converting, but secondly, can you imagine how many search terms are out there for the word Wi-Fi? You can have people looking for what Wi-Fi means, 
what the definition is, the Wi-Fi logo symbol, whether devices are Wi-Fi compatible, all of it. But for some reason, this particular search term didn't spend huge amounts in the account relevant or in, in proportion to the amount of search there is for that term. Same with dress. How many people type in dress looking for a picture of a dress or inspiration for an outfit, whatever it might be? Google knew only to show for the relevant people for that term. And as a result of that, when you look at the entire budget in the search campaigns in the, this account, the term dress, if you just had it on broad match running without smart bidding, it would spend everything in the next hour. It would, because there's so much search for this type of term. It's so generic, it would. However, when using broad match with smart bidding, it knew when to pull back and it knew when to move forward, which is why these two search terms would have been added as negatives under normal circumstances, but we had to be very careful. These cannot be negatives because they ended up being the best search terms in the entire account on both of these campaigns. That's the lesson for today. So you can see when it comes to scaling an account, how easily negatives could get out of hand and limit your performance, especially if in the long term you get enough conversions to potentially test broad match. So you might think to yourself, okay, I'm on exact match right now, and in the future I may move to broad match or I may want more volume. How can I manage this negative keyword list if I'm adding in negatives I may want to remove in future? And that is where the shared library of negative exclusion lists come in, comes into play. If you go into the shared library in Google Ads and you go under exclusion lists, you can add lists of negative keywords and you can give these lists very specific themes. Going back to the example I mentioned around locations, you can add a list of all the locations outside of your target area of the biggest towns and cities you cannot service, for example. You could call this list locations, and therefore you've got it managed very easily. And if in the long term you wanted to move into a new location, you could simply go back to that list and remove the specific negative from that very specific list, or regenerate a new list and update that existing list with the new list of locations that you want to exclude from your campaign. It makes it a lot more simple to manage. And again, if you're on exact match and you're not getting good results out of the search term, going back to my example of Wi-Fi or dresses or whatever, whatever the generic search term in your industry is, you can create a generic list and add all of your generic negatives in there. And if at such a time you want to test broad match and see what it could do, you could go in and de decouple the campaign from that exclusion list in order to see what Google can do with those more generic terms. See if it brings you more volume of conversions while keeping your CPAs and ROASs in line with your business goals. So you can manage lists much more easily using the shared library to future-proof your planning of your campaign. So I would always advise you go in here to create negative lists and theme them so you can manage in the future what you want to do with your campaigns. The final word of caution with negative keywords is if you're looking at a negative keyword in your search terms report and you're thinking, I'm not quite sure whether I should add this. Maybe I need to add it, maybe I don't. I can see how it kind of could be relevant, maybe it couldn't be. Who knows, you're kind of on the fence about this term. Don't add it as a negative yet. Give it some time to perform, especially if it doesn't have a click in the data beside it. Even if it does have one click, wait for a couple of clicks to see whether or not it could convert for your business. I think the threshold of waiting for data is too low for a lot of advertisers. They add things as negatives way too quickly. They haven't got enough data to justify whether or not it's a good or bad search term, especially when it's in that gray area of whether it could be positive or negative for the campaign. Wait for the data, especially if you're only getting impressions and no click data and very little cost data. Just wait a bit longer. There's no harm in doing that. If by the end of a process you've got maybe 10 clicks or whatever it might be to this search term and CPCs are quite high, you may wish to eliminate that risk and lower your cost of advertising and lower your cost per lead by making that term a negative. But, on, but conversely, that term could actually turn out to get one conversion in the next month from only like three or four clicks. But because you acted too quickly, you may have missed that conversion. So give yourself more time to see whether or not search terms will work for your business as opposed to just eliminating terms that you're on the fence about. Remember, you're on the fence for a reason. You're thinking about it. So give it some time. There's no harm necessarily in doing this. If you're running an extremely efficient campaign and you want to massively cut down on costs, you could potentially make it a negative preemptively, but you're going to potentially limit your future growth. You're always in this balance on Google Ads between growing and getting efficiency. If you're maximizing efficiency, the harm of doing that is very low because your expectations for growth are not there. If your expectations are to grow an account and get more traffic and more sales and more leads, 
then this could be limiting behavior. So you have to look at the balance and decide where you sit as a business with your Google Ads campaign. So there you have it. That is my negative keyword masterclass. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments down below. I reply to pretty much all comments on all of my new videos. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the other content on the channel and maybe watch the video popping up on screen now that YouTube and the algorithm deems relevant for my channel.